Hello everyone, and welcome to my very first ship build video. This is the Battle Station, which is the ship I was using with my Commander character build, which came out just a couple of days ago. Um, and I'm gonna go over what it all is. Obviously we have the overview here, so if you're looking for just the basic stats, here you go. Main thing I will note is I've only got a crew space of seven so far. One upgrade I definitely would want to do if I'd spent a bit more time with the character is get that up to eight, because that's kind of a limit on how many crew you can have. But overall, I'm happy with everything with this. So I'm going to just show you what this ship is like, talk you through some of my design choices, and yeah, we'll just kind of have a good time. First of all, the colouring. I can show you quite easily. Yeah, we went with very much a grey kind of palette. This is designed as a military kind of ship, so I was like grey and a bit of black highlight here and there just to make it not too samey, but very much I wanted it to be a function over form sort of thing. I think that makes sense, but yeah, the aesthetics were not the biggest concern, although where I did put some uh, aesthetic thought into it was first off with these Nova engine struts. They don't weigh a lot, and without them, it just kind of looks wrong. The engine just sticks up over the top, and yeah. With them, though, they do a great job of actually making everything feel a bit more connected. I also have the Nova Cowling 2L-TM and 2L-TF, which connects into the engines. Once again, without, you end up with just the gap there, and also just a big flat long line, which doesn't work so well. And to kind of give a nicer edge and make it feel like you're cutting through space, we have these Deimos wing ports, which, yeah, look great. I, I'm, I'm a real big fan of them, especially the uh, C port, how it's just got these little lines in, which I feel, in my brain, they're like some thermal dissipators or something weird like that. All this stuff serves no actual function, but it's just to make it the ship look a lot better. Because without them, it's just a box with some guns and engines. Which is still very good, but yeah, not ideal. Uh, technically on the aesthetic point as well, we have a weapon mount, which doesn't initially serve any purpose, but you'll notice it has weapons on it. The name kind of gives it away. And yeah, weapon mounts of a one like semi-cosmetic thing, which I'm very much on board with. So they make it a lot easier to fit on weapons, especially if your ship just doesn't have many spaces. Although this one does, but as you can tell, it's really the aesthetic pieces which give it a lot of spaces i found. Now, on to just some boring stuff. I got Aculanders. I went with six of them. This is very much just for symmetry, because I wanted the ship to be as symmetrical as it possibly can be at any angle. In fact, this, the uh, H30 Atlas HE or Helium 3 tank, is the one non aesthetic piece, really, because, yeah, it just goes on one side. But other than that, it's like completely symmetrical, which I love. Uh, also, the Helium tank needs Starship Design for that. I believe Starship Design 3 is the highest any of these pieces go. Or may, uh, may only be two. Maybe I am this is an extra point where I didn't need to. But yeah, piloting four and starship design, you'll see all the perks as they go up. But yeah, this is one piece which kind of breaks the symmetry, but it's not too big a deal. For our lander, I have an NG-6 landing bay. I really just go for something fairly light here. When you look underneath, it does seem a bit weird how there's no support at the back here. So I considered doing some other stuff with it, but the key thing is making sure that your landing bay actually connects to everything, and I didn't want to rejig it around to try and see, like, oh, can I make it work? Okay, it works there just fine, apparently. I see no checks or anything. But yeah, you can play around with that. Having it at the front does also make it very easy to just board your ship, which is something I go with all the time now. I try and have the cockpit and the landing bay both kind of at the front of the ship, or at least the landing bay at the front of where it will land, makes things so much easier. Speaking of the cockpit, we have a Con Tiki B400 bridge. This, yeah, this has a decent bit of cargo, but I mostly picked it because it's small, but still fairly tough. Like, the cockpits aren't super important. Uh, one thing that does matter is actually the visuals, so once we get inside the ship, because I will take you on a bit of a tour, you'll be able to see 
out of it quite well. And that is the one recommendation I'd have with people when choosing cockpits, is actually get into the ship, see how it looks, and then make up your mind. Now, in terms of storage, the Galleon S203 cargo hold gives 1,200 cargo. <laughs> yeah, I've got two of these. That's 2,400 cargo with that, and if we just go back, you can see, yeah, 2,740 cargo overall, which is just tons. And these two are the bulk of that. It really is lovely. For a docker, a slim docker on top is what I like to go for. Uh, I really didn't need extra compartments, and I didn't want something just ju jutting out. Yeah, jutting out at the top of the ship, so this was lovely. My shield generator is a Vanguard Bulwark. Uh, I do believe you need to go through the Vanguard quest for this to show up. So there is a bit of a limit there. But this is just a Class B, and this is a Class C ship. So you could probably find a Class C shield generator, which is just as good. This is really just lots of shield. Regen rate isn't great. But yeah, it's decent. Although the max power is something I'm a bit annoyed by, just how much power it uses up. But you get over it. Especially when you've got a Fusor DC-401 reactor. That's a deep core reactor with 29 power generated. I'm pretty... I think that the maximum power is 30, or at least I thought I did, but apparently there's more than that. But yeah, 29 power means you get a lot to work with. This just helps you power everything. I don't know why I need to keep talking about that. I don't. Our grav drive, I've got at the back here. I go back and forth over which grav drives I like aesthetically. But this one works fine. Gives you enough thrust and everything to just hop from system to system. Yeah, it's good. It's good, that's all I need to say. For our engine, four Supernova 2000s. <laughs> this is a very heavy ship. You can see the mass here is quite a bit. So I just really was like, yep, let's just get a bunch of these things, stick them on the back, give us enough power to actually go kind of fast. Because you don't want to be just stagnant out in space and yeah this does a good job they are only three max power each but obviously that caps out quite quickly i think technically if you got rid of one it wouldn't make a huge difference just because of the power you can give but yeah you're gonna need a lot of engines a lot of very powerful engines if you're making a big heavy ship like this i believe the final component to go over that really matters are the weapons so I've got Particle, Ballistic, and Missile, which I feel is the best combination. So for our... that's the Ballistic. For our Particle, a Gorse Gun. I really wanted to try this out. And it drains quickly. That is the main thing I've noticed, is that it will drain itself quite fast in a fight, but it packs one hell of a punch. You can see, uh, yeah, Shielded Damage there of 7, Fire Rate of 4, Hull Damage 24. This is the ballistic one, isn't it? I just said particle, didn't I? Is that the particle one? Yep, that's the alpha beam. Okay, this one is hull and shield damage 19 apiece. This one, very little. Shield damage only 7, but 24 hull damage just tears apart ships. And for the actual particle one, yeah, 19 shielded damage, but also that high hull damage, that's where particle weapons come in kind of handy. They're just generically good, so you can use this all the time. And yeah, the automatic firing is very nice. I'll show some combat footage at the end, most likely. Or possibly at the start. I don't know how I'm formatting these yet. And for the missiles, I've got an Atli? At Atlati? 270C missile launcher. Uh, I also pair everything up, which is just very handy. The missile damage is always very high, but I'm actually not sold on missiles being all that great. Because first off, the low fire rate, but also the lock-on times... Like, it's not terrible, but it does prevent some of the time you're actually firing at the enemy. In fact, if we go to flight check, we can see in weapon groups that because they are the same weapon, you can just group them as one thing. I do hope there'll be an update or something where you can, like, multi-group things so they all fire at the same time, but I'm not holding out too much hope on that. Now, in terms of the compartments which join everything together, I pretty much went with a bunch of Stroud Eklund things because I wanted a fairly consistent feel inside of the ship. So we have a 3x2 cargo hall, a 3x2 mess hall, 
a three by one all in berth. I really just needed to go for stuff that was very big, and a three by one engineering bay as the main ones. And three by one all in one. Did I say that one as well? Possibly. Also have a couple of storerooms just to the side, and I believe there's one more bit underneath. Is there not one more bit? That might be everything. I'll take you for a bit of a tour inside so you can see what that's like. But I find going with consistent uh, habitats, or whatever it is they're actually called, the modules, just gives you a more uniform design within the ship. I am now inside of a ship, and a big thing I wanted with this was it to feel like a real battle station, somewhere where crew would live and just kind of exist, and you'll see I've got plenty of crew as we wander about. So, beds you always want in a ship. If you end up with a habitat that doesn't have a bed, I would change it right away, because getting that well-rested bonus nice is useful. And as we push through, the engineering bay is like my favourite visual area. It offers no real benefits, but it just does look very cool. And really does make it feel like your ship is functioning, because you've got all the engineering parts and that, that's probably something important, right? Yeah. The storerooms... I kind of wish they had more places of actual storage, because as you can see, there's there's a storage crate. And I think that's it. I, I would like to see some storage rooms that have, like, the wall mounts and several storage boxes and things. That'd be a bit better. Uh, also, I'm pretty sure, yeah, this is all. Oh, doing some push-ups. Fair enough. Let's Always just... A pleasure, I'd like to get around you. Yep, I've got a little cafeteria here. Good. And it is nice that crew members will actually interact with the environment, so we've actually got multiple people doing things on the ship, which really is what this is about. This is supposed to be like a military-themed vessel. And we also have a bit of a conference room, or a battle planning room, I guess you could call it. It just adds to the whole vibe. What can I do for you, boss? Uh, as well as the mess. We've yet yeah, looked it's, it's so cool having people just wander about the ship. Uh, on here we do have a cooking station, which is good. I, I don't know how you get all the different crafting stations. In fact, if anyone knows in the comments or has done the research to, to see what habitats give you uh, what stations, that would be great. Because the one I'd really like is the research station. I feel like that's the most important, but I don't think I have that on my ship anywhere. I've had a good look around and haven't been able to find it. But I have got multiple cooking points, <laughs> yeah, for anyone who happens to want to cook. The inside is much less focused on um, function as it is just being nice. And here we see some of the portholes, which actually let you look outside, which is pretty cool. You can see I'm at New Atlantis, just parked at the spaceport, and the detail on the ships is brilliant. I just love how they all look. I spend too much time, too much time just staring at parts of a ship, because look at it. You can just look, you can see... You can see the little... Oh, okay, I actually got too close there. But when I don't get too close, you can see, like, the little bumps and the texture detail, and oh, it's it's absolutely gorgeous. I will quickly take us upside to the cockpit, Dad, if Andresia could get out of the way. Um, I can't remember which one of the ladders it is. We have two ladders here, one of which will take us to the cockpit. The other one just gets us to another all-in-one section. So up we go. And Vasco's fine. Nobody needs to be concerned. Vasco is perfectly fine. <laughs> okay, here we've got another, yeah, another galley. This is the docker up at the top, so you can get up from this way. More beds and bathrooms and just generic stuff. So it's the other way I need to go. All right, this one. Yeah, I do find it a bit confusing <laughs> navigating my own ship at times, but that's just how things go. And here is the cockpit. Which, oh, look at that lighting on it right now. Gorgeous. It's got all these jump seats, which are kind of nice. Means you sometimes end up with people just sat next to you. But if we go into the pilot seat, the one kind of important functional detail of the cockpits, which I mentioned about, is how you can see out of them. Which we can't see right now. <laughs> okay, I will... There we go. You can see that there's a decent bit of visual room here. Some cockpits really block you, and there is some blocking off in the corners there, and there are obviously lots of beams, but overall this is a decent bit of view you get, and if we take it up into space you'll see again.
So here we are in space, and as you can see, the bars do provide a bit of blocking, which isn't great. The stuff in the corners, obviously not an issue, but you do get quite a bit of room here and there. And of course, there's always third person. Although third person is the one place where I feel quite What's glad that I haven't built up the ship too much higher, because that could be real bad. Uh, if we do some quick testing as well, I will turn off my systems there to max out the engines if it will let me max out the engines thank you game so you can see how fast this thing can actually go i normally keep it at very low speeds because as you can tell with maxed out shields it's kind of ridiculously tanking like it's really tough to destroy but for max speeds as standard only 168 max speed which is not fast this thing is a tank as opposed to a speedy fighter but let's throw on the boost to see how fast we can get it Oh, the boost looks really good as well. There we go. That is... jeez. Okay. Top speed goes at over 500, but it does decelerate very quickly. Hey there. How's it going? And yeah, you can see that even with the 30 stuff I've got there, that's, that's not a lot to be working with. Really is not. But hey, it's very functional. I might throw in a bit of combat footage or stuff right now. I don't know how I'm editing these yet. Please do comment below your own opinions on how you want to see them. That's going to be it for this video. If you enjoyed, leave a like. If not, you can dislike, or better yet, comment to let me know. As always, thank you very much for watching. Sarge out.